In our last painting we dealt with light position and light direction, the light colour and the importance of this when uh, starting your painting. It's the way that light reflects from objects that enables us to determine the form of things. The light and dark shapes we see tell us of the corrugations in the iron or the shape and form of these tiles. So today we'll look at uh, landforms and how the light influences what we see to try and make these uh, hills and mountains and things look three dimensional. We'll start with the mountains today uh, as they are going to be the most uh, distant thing in our landscape most likely. Here in New Zealand of course we've got the Southern Alps down the South Island, we've got Rohini's in the North Island for example and so a lot of our uh, landscapes are very likely to have mountains in them. So let's have a go. Right, so we'll start by putting a background sky colour in, mostly white here with a tiny bit of the AL1 fellow blue. As we get a little higher in our sky, we'll go a little warmer, add a little bit of uh, magenta in here. We want a little paler near the horizon. Always a good idea for our skies. I'm using a little gesso from the white there, seems to be nice and strong. Okay, so much for our background. Okay, first of all I'll make an approximate uh, outline for mountains. Okay, that'll do. Prepare a darkish neutral colour by mixing the three primaries with a small amount of white already in my palette. We'll use mostly blue with a small quantity of magenta uh, and even less yellow. I keep adjusting until I have the bluish grey that I'm after. A little more of the same mix with less white gives me a darker grey. So the dark colours for my uh, mountains to start with. Right, I'll now draw in uh, just approximately where my ridges, my highest parts will be so that I can start uh, forming my hills and valleys. These chalk lines will be my guides as I start to build up the form of the uh, mountains. I'm not too concerned whether it's exactly as the mountains that may be in front of me are or not, as long as I get the idea of mountains. Now I have to decide which direction the light is coming from and which parts are going to be lightest. Uh, these are going to be snowy mountains, so I'm going to use quite a lot of uh, white or pale colours. The light's coming from this uh, left hand side, so these are the sides that I'm going to have to uh, lighten. Yeah. So this side of the ridge is going to be uh, sort of lighter. 
I have uh, another ridge coming down here, so a bit of there, and maybe these ones coming in different angles down the side here. Gradually I start to build up the form of the uh, mountains with the lightest parts facing the uh, sun and the sides of those ridges. I'll have quite a deep uh, valley in here I think, so we'll put a bit of light in here behind this hill. Coming down to this, this valley down here. I'll just add a little blue into my white here to get some sort of mid-tones. So far it's all sort of just dark and light. After I've tried this, then I'll look for the deepest gullies and I'll strengthen those and make them darker still, where there's practically no light at all. This will help us look to find the forms that we want. In the last lesson we talked about the time of day and how that affected the colour of the light. I've decided that this needs to be brightened a little bit, uh, needs a sort of maybe a yellowish tinge to contrast with the purple to give it a, so we might call this early morning or early evening or something, any excuse but I'll mix up a, a little white with a tiny bit of yellow and maybe a little bit of magenta to give us some warm colour. very tiny amount of the yellow that's pretty strong isn't it but that'll be okay and I think we'll mix a little bit with the uh, magenta in it as well just to give us a, another slight tinge don't forget start with your palest color first when you're mixing like this start with the white then the yellow don't try and dilute that down to a pale color you'll end up with a, a flagon of it Alright, we can see how the light is very important when we're doing landscapes and the uh, causing land forms and so on. Everything is indicated by the way the light hits it, hits our eyes and gives us the information. I hope this has been a useful lesson to you and that in some way it will help you with your painting, your landscapes or creating forms, uh, looking at light and uh, shade and so on. We will develop these ideas in future lessons further. Thank you for watching.